Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted a tiger and I did a lot of wet and wet painting with this one. So I think it'll be a good uh, tutorial on how to do loose edges and get soft but very defined details. So let's just jump right in. To start this painting, I did some masking and as usual, I used a rigger brush for the whiskers and I scrub my rigger brush in the water and then I scrub it in soap and then I scrub it in the masking and that's how I get my um, brush protected so that if my masking does happen to dry on that brush it won't ruin it so the soap kind of plays a protective role so I masked out the whiskers I masked out the little glint in the eye I masked out a few of the little fluffies in his ear and a few of these chin hairs and that's pretty much it for the masking. I didn't want to overdo it. And for the background, I used a lot of indigo and I also used just a palette mix of green and I wet the entire painting except for the areas where I wanted to keep really light. So yes, I painted clear water over both the tiger and the background before I painted in this background because I wanted the edges to all be really soft. And I used very thick paint for this approach because I wanted all the edges to be really stark but um, soft. So I used very thick cream consistency paint. In fact, the paint that was on my palette had been just uh, squeezed out onto my palette. So it was very soft paste and I added a very little bit of water to do the background to paint around the image of the tiger. So a lot of negative painting, but on moist paper, not dripping, puddling wet, but fairly wet. And then I always, almost always kept the paper wet for this entire painting until I got into the smaller details. Like for these stripes, I used mostly lamp black and I almost always painted the stripes with cream consistency paint onto fairly moist paper, not dripping again, not puddling, um, but fairly wet. And my paper would dry really quickly and I'd have to re-wet. And sometimes what I would do is I would spray um, with my little spray bottle and I'd spray it to re-moisten it. Sometimes I'd let it dry completely and then re-wet it and restart again so that I didn't get any cauliflowers. Because as you know, if you paint with more water in your brush than what you have on your paper, you will get cauliflowers. And in this particular painting, I didn't want to do that. But I did want everything to be really soft. So for the ears, I used a mix of Windsor Violet and Burnt Sienna. And I wanted to get that one ear really dark on the inside. And for the fur colors, I used a mix of Oriolan, Natfall Red, and Burnt Sienna. And I used a glazing technique where I got everything really wet, um, let it dry a little bit, and then painted in the, the colors of the coat. So everything stayed really soft and meshed together and stayed really velvety. So that will help keep your fur, especially if you're painting short fur, it'll help your fur stay um, velvety looking and soft. And then for the black dots on his face and these black areas um his mouth and there's this black area right here on the side of his face i just kept everything somewhat moist when i painted into them with cream into those areas with cream consistency lamp black and uh right about here in the painting i felt like okay this should be getting to look like it's done but i just felt like it looked washed out so what i did was i took uh, the picture I had in Photoshop and I played with the values and I darkened them to make them look more dramatic and then I used that to help me darken the values in this tiger so he looked more dramatic and I wanted him to kind of look like he was emerging from the jungle kind of mysterious mysterious kind of fierce and uh, he was looking a little washed out at this point so I changed my reference photo a little bit just by changing the values and it really helped me push this painting to the next level I think by really pushing some of those medium tones a little bit darker and um, my darks were already really dark but my medium tones were kind of light medium tones and that pushed my medium tones into kind of 
darker medium tones and that really helped uh, bring some drama to the lighter areas and balance everything out and look like he was kind of coming through the shadows of the trees of the jungle. So I wanted that air of mystery in this painting and I think that really helped. For his nose, by the way, I used naphthol red or riolan, a little bit of burnt sienna because I didn't want it to be glowing orange um, like Rudolph. I want him to be a fierce tiger, not Rudolph. So I did tone his nose color down a little bit from what's in the reference photo. And then in that lower, on our left, that lower left corner, I darkened that very much so that it's kind of like, you know, how when they use lights in the theater, it um, it create, makes everything dark except the most interesting part. That's the same thing I was trying to do with this painting. I was darkening the corners literally of the painting so that it added drama to the area of interest, which is the eye. And keep in mind, everything I'm doing in this painting is to support the main uh, area of interest, which is the eye. Everything plays a supporting role to that. So the green of the leaves behind the tiger help bring out the green of the tiger's eyes. The dark shadows around the tiger um, help the viewer's eye know to move on to more interesting areas, the eye and the face. And the more close you get to the tiger's eye, the more detail I have around the tiger's eye. And then out on the periphery of the edges and the boundaries of the painting, it's looser and softer and bigger details and not any little tiny jewelry type details. And then as I continue to build, I put some pure ultramarine blue on some of the shadows right in here on his face. I really helped, I think that helped add a lot of drama to his face and that's not in the reference photo. And I really like how that came out. And then to start doing the final details that really give it that final cha-ching, uh, I used some um, gouache type paint to paint these little long hairs along his jowl. I love those. And also I painted some of his um, little furs coming off his chin, a couple little uh, whiskers coming off his eyes that I didn't get masked in. I forgot them and I think they came out great. And I use a ricker and um, a little bit more water so that I can keep the point of the rigger really thin and skinny. And then um, I'm putting in final details that really make the painting sing. And then I can remove my mask. So after I remove my mask, you'll see that I go in with my scrubber brush and I scrub at the base of the whiskers to soften those up, soften up a lot of where the, um, soften up a lot of where the masking was. I put some masking along his chest, upper chest, and I went in and I scrubbed all that to keep it really soft. To finish it, I, I signed my name with the white gouache because this is such a dark painting that it supported me signing my name over there on the left with white gouache. So I try to make my signature kind of work into the painting. So that white gouache kind of matched what I had already done with some of the whiskers and some of the fur textures in the painting. And to do the eye, I used Windsor Green Gold, Ultramarine Blue, and Oriolan. And I treat the eye just like I treat the rest of the painting where it has lights, mediums, and darks. And you just want to make sure that you get all those. And uh, be sure to join me on Patreon because we flew right over the eye and I talked right through it. So um, I will be covering this in much more detail on my Patreon. So be sure to join me there. And uh, I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So please subscribe and I will have some good content coming your way next week too. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tiger painting. And if you're on Facebook, come join me on my watercolor workshop group and show me your work. And I'd love to see you there. So I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for painting with me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.